Hi there. Welcome to the continuation of our conversation with political economist, development expert, founding executive secretary of the National Identification Authority, and father of ACE journalist, the late Komla Dumo. Last week, he shared his beautiful experience growing up in Aplau and his secondary school days in Bishop Herman. Today, will be tapping into his rich experience at the National Identification Authority, the Electoral Commission, plus pick his thoughts on some national issues. He would also be sharing his cooking prowess, plus his lifestyle and family values. Stay with me. So from secondary school to the University of Ghana, yeah. again, this is a Voltairean now coming to live fully in Accra. How was the experience like? Was it different? Well, uh, before I left home, my father told me clearly that if I should go to the university and just simply have fun, I would come back not even qualified as a school teacher. <laughs> so it was important for me to concentrate on my books. Okay. And those years, the first university exam was a very compelling and threatening examination. Okay. Should you fail the exam, you were given one more chance to stay okay. and do the exam. Mm. If you passed, then you continue. So there I was, faced with the first university examination. Mm. And with this story or statement or warning mm. from my father. Yeah. So my focus was entirely on my books. I spent most of the time in the library searching through everything I could find okay. in order to make things work for me. Mm. And those were the days, of course, the university offered various services to students. Mm. We didn't have to go and find food. Yeah. There was a dining hall. There were stewards who served us. I mean, it was a different environment. We were being trained mm. to become the elites, yeah. the leaders. But there was this element of, you know, European British lifestyle. Mm. And so you had to wear academic gowns, you have to have, uh, how do you call it, uh, dinners, mm -hmm. four o'clock teas See. and so on and so forth. I heard about that. You know, <laughs> all kinds of things where an aura okay. was created around us. Mm. Now, should you have all that aura around you mm. and then you end up failing your exam, <laughs> you can imagine what the people in the village, what if you would, <laughs> you know, your image will come crashing. Yeah. So, I was determined to... And my father also did something which you know, I am grateful for. Okay. He never wanted me to be involved in alcoholic drinks. Yeah. He introduced me to drinking wine. Mm -hmm. And he would always say, red wine yeah. is medicinal. It's good for the heart, yes. they say. <laughs> That's it. And every weekend, Fridays, every driver he could get, you will get red wine and give that red wine to bring to you. To bring school. to me in the university. He was a good father. Well, <laughs> but he was tough. <laughs> no nonsense. So I would have this red wine, and that gave me a certain status. <laughs> and of course, those things, you know, we can't go into the details. You told me about you know, you it. Know. The girls were uh, loving. No, you know, don't go there yet. <laughs> you know. But okay. it also encouraged me mm. to spend my time on my books. Okay. And so it was that 
when we took the first university exam, I was so scared of failure yeah. that I r ran away from campus. <laughs> I went back home. I didn't want to be on campus to hear of my failure. The results. The results. <laughs> and we had some wonderful people in the university administration who will go and paste the results <laughs> on the board at the BAM library. Okay. And I was not prepared to be a party to that kind of thing. So I went home. <laughs> I didn't pay attention to what was happening on campus. Mm -hmm. But one of my former elementary school teachers yeah who had become a year older than me in the university mm. tradition okay went and checked the results uh -huh. and realized that i had been invited for honors in sociology wow honors in political science oh wow honors in history wow history subjects oh that's he, was, he was so excited about it <laughs> and within a short time he had arrived at home ah to break the news i was in the house <laughs> when i found the gate opened and there he was mm. if you had dug a hole <laughs> you would have entered. i would have entered it and asked people to cover me up and i could see a smile on his face <laughs> and he said look you here what is your problem <laughs> You've been invited for all the three subjects. Uh, Come on. Let's get back to Lagos. <laughs> I had the courage. Now I had to make a decision <laughs> as to what subject I will go into and take an honest degree. Yeah. So that was the first challenge. Okay. And many of the teachers who taught me were anxious to invite me to take their you, you know, were an intelligent you, you, you. student no i was just ordinary <laughs> just doing my work applying myself i mean the real thing is self-application yeah nobody's unintelligent yeah the simple thing is self-application that's true so that was how it all started for me but if you're talking about life in Legon. I was in Commonwealth Hall. Ah, the famous Commonwealth Hall. <laughs> I'm notoriously a vandal. But I always operated from behind the scenes. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I have so many friends. And if something devilish is to be done, I was behind the scenes doing the scripts. Working out. <laughs> yeah, working the scripts. Okay. Yeah, that was, you know, the life out there. Oh, yes. So, as a couple world student, I'm sure you definitely got into trouble. Uh, in Legon? Yes. Not really, because everyone thought I was a gentleman. Yeah, they thought. They but thought. <laughs> <laughs> but they didn't know you were working <laughs> things. <laughs> and I became friends of people <laughs> who I was. <laughs> 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 so why is it that when people were read to campus, you guys will hold and make noise? Why were you doing that? Well, let me explain. I think there, 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 there was some misunderstanding of what Commonwealth Hall stood for. Okay. First and foremost, the motto of the school is truth stands. Yeah. And we also have a Greek background, Greek and Roman background, mm. to this whole idea of truth stance. Okay. If you stand for truth and you pursue it yeah. and you achieve victory, mm -hmm. then there is a, a time for celebration. Definitely. So Father Bacchus, yeah. who is the god of celebration mm. allows you now to booze <laughs> and misbehave <laughs> and <A> celebrate <laughs> <laughs> you see that's really the idea okay but somehow 
some people misunderstood and then and they just misbeha started misbehaving but we, we we were all in commonwealth hall yeah we knew those people who were a little off track yeah but the essence of Commonwealth hall is stand for the truth mm -hmm. fight for the truth okay and i'm going back to the idea of justice mm. if you fight for the truth you are fighting for justice so even at commonwealth hall you got answers to that question you used to ask you, whilst you were young precisely mm. precisely great so i hear that also in uh, um, as a vandal you 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 will make all the noise you will scream you will do all of that but in the night you will go and read oh absolutely when everybody is asleep absolutely what that's what i agree that? you were fooling the other students no <laughs> no we were not they didn't understand you see there is always a time for relaxation yeah there's always a time to just be yourself yeah there is always a time to put out a part of you that people don't really know yeah but you can't overdo it definitely you see mm -mm. now for me if the university community had understood what vandalism was all about mm. it would have been a carnival yeah bringing people together okay for them to develop a certain bonding mm. you know beyond you know what w you would normally expect okay but vandalism came to be seen as an aberration yeah from the culture of the university mm -hmm. which shouldn't have been the case yeah. if you say commonwealth hall and vandalism is an aberration yeah then it means you're telling me i'm an aberration yeah i am not okay all right mm -hmm. there is no way i will see someone or something happening which is unjust mm. and mine is to keep quiet yeah i'll have to speak about it mm -hmm. That is what Commonwealth Hall has taught me. Yeah. As a vandal, I will never today or tomorrow, and I have never been mm. in a position to say, this is the truth, yeah. as I understand it, yep. and simply close my eyes to those things. Mm. I'll speak out. Yeah. I'll write about those things. Mm. You may not like those things, yeah. but that is what a vandal is supposed to do. That's all vandalism is about. That's all that it is all about. Okay. It is not a cult. Okay. You don't create, uh, you know, uh, how do you put it, uh, a, 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 a chief vandal. Yeah. Who, you know, establishes himself as, a, you know, a priest. Mm -hmm. You know, some priest. And if people come to worship and genuflect before him. Yeah. No, that is not what it is about. Okay. It also provides you with an opportunity to release the tensions okay. within your system. Okay. But your sanity, mm -hmm. you cannot compromise. Yeah. And you cannot also forget that what you are doing, you are doing it in the benefit of others. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You see, mm -hmm. if you go into the scriptures, yep. Christ is the truth. Mm -hmm. Teach me your ways mm -hmm. and I'll walk in your truth. Definitely. That is what Commonwealth Hall it's should, about. Should, should really be about. Okay. If it's not done that way, I'm not part of it. Okay. Let's talk about your baby, the National Identification Authority. Yes. What are you proud of as you sit here with what you did with uh, the National Identification Authority? You are asking me a question that I'm reluctant to answer. But <laughs> I'll, I'll try and give you some answer. Go ahead. Uh, first of all, I had served about 10 years in helping to build the Electoral Commission. Yes. And I'm very, very proud of all that I did at the Electoral Commission. At the Electoral Commission. Even though I'm a little unworried about what is happening to that institution today. 
I was just about to retire from the Electoral Commission. In fact, I did inform the authorities that I was retiring. Okay. To return home because my late wife, yeah. may she rest in peace, I love Men. her, Men. was chronically ill and bedridden. Okay. And I was anxious to return home mm -hmm. to look after her. Yeah. But before I left the Electoral Commission, mm. the government decided to establish a multi-sectoral committee mm. to revisit the idea of a national identification. Yeah. And by a series of historical coincidences, mm -hmm. I found myself having to chair that committee. Yeah. But because, unfortunately, government was not going to pay allowances, <laughs> I found myself having to take the responsibility okay. with two other young people mm -hmm. to do the research and so on and so forth. So I wrote the technical report. Yes. That technical report was validated mm -hmm. by international technology experts okay. that what I had done was the, going to be the best practice. Mm. And so they recommended that to the government. Yeah. But I was in the throes of leaving electoral commission yeah. to come and take care of my ailing wife. Yeah. Then one Sunday, I got a call that President Kufo wanted to see me. Okay. So, I went to see him. And the message was very direct. Okay. That he didn't think that I'll do this kind of technical report mm -hmm. with this international technology evaluation and he would then ask somebody else to go and do it. And implement. It. Implement this. Yeah. And so his judgment was that I had to take that responsibility. Okay. That was a difficult challenge for me. For you. I was trying to explain to him that I didn't want to do it. Mm. But he waved me off. I'm finished with you. <laughs> I'm with you all the way. It's not negotiable. It's not negotiable. <laughs> the long and short of it all is that I found myself having to take, take on this report. Yeah. But let me add something. As I drove from President Kufour's house, yeah. So many things were going through my mind. Mm -hmm. How was I going to tell my ailing wife okay. that I was now going to abandon her and take another and job? Take on another job in public service. Yeah. Can understand. And she was waiting for me, as was usual. Mm. And I came back and I said, Hey, mommy. Asema <laughs> Bao. That's the only tree I know. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and I narrated the story to her. To her, and I said, you know, I'm still not very comfortable with the idea. I simply can't see you in this situation mm -hmm. and take on this this job. She looked at me. And said, my dear. There are over 20 million people in this country. Yeah. Some of them much better qualified than yourself. Yes. Who could be given that job? Mm -hmm. A God in his wisdom has asked the president to choose you. To choose you. 
But if it is because of me and my ailment that you not take that job, don't worry about me. Oh, I'll be okay. God bless her for us. That was a painful moment for me. Yeah. I'm giving you this background because one has had to make sacrifices. Yep. What will Philip Baho's daughter say to you if you are given a national assignment? Mm -hmm. Yeah. She will say whether you are sick, whether you are whatever, you, you have to go and do it. Definitely. Definitely. So there I was. Yeah. Having to combine looking after my ailing wife yeah. on a daily basis mm -hmm. and taking on a public service responsibility. That's a huge task. Yes. Now I am not an IT person. But again I give credit to President Kufo. I looked at President Kufo later on and I told him, you know what? Before I initiate this process, yeah. I would have to visit other jurisdictions mm -hmm. to study their systems yep. and see how they working at these things. True. In order to help build the best possible for this country. Yeah. He didn't hesitate. He just instructed that anywhere I wanted to travel, mm -hmm. travel all the things that they have to pay, they have to give me the opportunity to go. Yeah. So I traveled to almost 11 countries. Wow. And every time I was making notes. Okay. Even the architectural designs of various places, you know. Yep. I was in the air. I was making notes. Wow. <laughs> how to structure this and what have you. And... I did the best to lay the foundation for this country, for national identification. Now, the most important thing is that an ID card is the only visible part of a national identification system. Mm -hmm. So you cannot deceive the public by simply saying, ID card, ID card, ID card. Yeah. If the architectural design, the technology, uh, you know, technology architecture, yeah. that must support the system, mm. is not in place, place and working in tandem. Yeah. All the sub components yeah. working in tandem, mm -hmm. that ID is useless. It's useless, yeah. Because the process of verification. Mm -hmm. To identify the person, yep. all right, mm -hmm. the verification process mm -hmm. has to come back to the database yeah. where technical people will go into the database to make comparisons yes. and in real time indicate who you are trying to identify. That's true. All right. Mm -hmm. It's a very complicated system yeah. and it is a security driven system. Mm -hmm. So if you look at the structure that I had helped to put up yes. there, mm. people don't even know that I had to tell the architecture, mm -hmm. the, the archi architect, yeah. how that building had to be structured. To be structured. Oh, wow. Yes. Wow, you became an architect at a point. I became an architect <laughs> because I had gone to several places so and seen how these things are done. done. And I said, you are the boss. Mm -hmm. You are the architect. Yep. This is the way it has to be done, mm. and so on and so forth. Wow. And it went on the table, and did it done. That's right. Okay? Mm. I had to sign the contract for the construction okay. of that place. Okay. All right? Mm -hmm. Then, the government selected a foreign company mm -hmm. to provide the equipment to install the identification system. Okay. We are talking of a system. Uh-huh. We are talking of a system that runs on a technology architecture. Yeah. You understand what mm -hmm. I'm saying? So, this company was recruited. That's a different story anyway. Yeah. I wasn't part of the selection. Yeah. But I found myself having to negotiate 
on behalf of the government. Government, okay. All right. Mm -hmm. So there were certain guidelines we had to establish. Yeah. Because multinational corporations have their way of coming and turning us around. Yeah. You know. <laughs> so having their way. That was a lot of homework you have to For do. You. Yeah. All right. Mm -hmm. I was lucky to have uh, a technical advisor, Akwesi Pieni say, Okay. You know, who would advise me on certain things. Yeah. But in terms of the details, all right, I had to go through all those things. Yeah. Because I was not, as I said, I was not only the chief executive mm -hmm. trying to create the administrative structures yeah. and recruit people mm. for the organization yeah. but i was also going to negotiate the best deal possible yeah. for, for the government, government and people of ghana yeah. should i fail my dear should, should have if i had failed the whole country the whole country i would have been in jail yeah all right that's true so it was a call to duty. Mm -hmm. So even if you look at our jingle, mm -hmm. the jingle starts with, this is the time calling for duty now. Okay. Yeah. It's like an anthem. Yeah. Arousing people in Ghana mm -hmm. that something so fundamental is being established mm -hmm. to change the developmental process. Yeah. So that we can be sufficiently independent i believe in authentic yep. development yeah that's right i don't believe in outward directed development that's correct so national identification is basically meant as the fundamental institution that will propel the country to the next level mm. you understand yeah so my position at the present time is that you can come with Changes in technology, but the architecture, the technology architecture, the verification process remains almost the same. The same, yeah. If you go to any physics book, yeah, eh, P1 V1 over T1 is mm -hmm. equal to K. Okay. It hasn't changed. It hasn't changed since time memorial. That memorial, it runs through the system. Yeah. All right? Mm -hmm. So technology can change. You can go from 2D barcode card yes. to smart card. Yeah. But the technology architecture must not change. Is almost the same. Yeah. The verification process is embedded in the system. Yeah. So you cannot allow any external agency to be directly involved in the operation of the national identification system that's true they can only be vendors that's true bring you equipment mm -hmm. but the operation of the system mm. is entirely a security driven operation yep. when it comes to how do you protect personal data mm. all right mm -hmm. the protection is embedded in the system yeah a local network is established Connected to all user institutions. Mm -hmm. Nobody interferes in that, you know, mm. unless the person is a hacker. Okay. But even there, you put what they call fireworks. Mm -hmm. Where you value your property, mm -hmm. your data. Mm -hmm. All right? The fireworks you put on the line mm. must be robust and must prevent anybody mm. from entering into the system when you look back are you happy with what has happened to the nia every jurisdiction will come with their own things okay but unfortunately national identification system as i know it should not be under political control okay it should be politically independent yeah but when you have politicians or governments coming into office, they have different ideas. Yeah. And so they put people in there to do what their policies demand. Yeah. Let me be honest with you. I worked under Kufo mm -hmm. 
-hmm. I don't belong to any political party. party. NDC, NPP, no. Yeah. But if you want to call me a diehard Nkrumahist, <laughs> maybe today you can say so. But interestingly, you worked under all of them. I worked under all of them. Yeah, that, that's yes. a plus. Yes. Independence. Yeah. Don't underrate my ability to serve my country. Yeah. You don't love my country more than I do. Yeah. So if you trust me and you give me things to do until you have justifiable reason yeah. to say, no, you are doing the wrong thing, mm -hmm. leave me alone with Should my do. management yep. and my board. My and it depends on the board as well. Mm -hmm. What type of board do you put there? Yeah. If you put political operators there, they are going to operate politically. Yeah. And they will end with unjust enrichment. Okay. Yeah. At the expense of the nation. Of the nation. So if you if you want me to answer your question, the fundamental issue is public interest versus private interest. You make the choice. If there is any indication of an attempt to put private interests over and above public interests, yep. I am not for it. Yep. Absolutely, I will not accept it. Yep. And that is my problem. Professor Ernest Kwaku Dumo is my guest tonight. If you just joined us, he is the father of the famous Komla Dumo, the boss player. When I returned from this break, he would also be sharing a few thoughts as we gear up to the next elections as a political economist. Plus, he'll be telling us about his lifestyle and family values. Stay with me. I'm coming right back. I know you've done really well for the NIA. Again, let me pick your thoughts on this as we gear up to the next elections. You have been with the Electoral Commission for years. Yes. What do you want to see in our next elections? I want to see a free and fair election. That's okay. the jargon we've always used. <laughs> Incredible elections. Incredible elections. But you see, <laughs> let, let me put it this way. Mm. Electoral Commission is a constitutional body. Okay. It has been given a lot of responsibilities. Mm -hmm. And everyone who serves in the Electoral Commission must stand above everything else. Yeah. There are situations where you need to be extra careful. Mm -hmm. Let me be a little critical here, which I really don't want to do. <laughs> to create a biometric register yes. It's a very complicated process. Mm -hmm. But Electoral Commission rejected the idea of national identification system and authority being the foundation for data sharing yeah. in order to make general data in this country. Yeah relevant with integrity yeah. and well protected. Mm -hmm. I was in the seat mm -hmm. and I've had problems with the electoral commission. Okay. 
refusing to have anything to do with national identification. Okay. But in the midst of all that we were doing at the time, mm. all of a sudden, Electoral Commission said they are going to start a biometric voters register. I remember. Fair enough. You can go ahead because every institution has the right to, to have a biometric register. Yeah. But when you want to cross-reference mm -hmm. with national identification, mm -hmm. the personal identification number issued by a national identification yeah. authority yeah. must run through all the system. Definitely. So you can have your voter card, mm -hmm. but the number, the personal identification number, mm -hmm. must have start with the jail code plus the number. Yeah. So if you want to cross-reference, mm -hmm. you have an easy way of doing, of so. doing that. But if the number is different, it will be difficult. It will be difficult. Yeah. Now, Electoral Commission at the time decided that they were going to have a biometric register. Mm -hmm. Fair enough. Nobody should refuse it. Yeah. They have the right to do it. Mm -hmm. But when you do verification, when you want to do verification, yeah. you don't use pink shit. Okay. Yeah. You are doing biometric verification biometric register yeah which is capturing fingerprints of people of people yeah you capture the you are capturing the face the face now we are talking of iris yeah iris capture mm -hmm. and iris capture has a problem okay. those who have diseases of the eye mm -hmm. when you subject them to the test mm -hmm. they'll fail Okay. In the verification process. Okay. You understand what I'm yeah. saying? So, you need to be very careful about dealing with these things. Yeah. So, somewhere along the line, where you decide that you're going to have a biometric register, mm -hmm. which is going to run on the platform of NIA, yes. you have to have the personal identification number okay. issued by NIA. Yeah. That is final. Yeah. And when it is issued, it can't be changed. Yeah. When someone comes to you and registers with the date of birth, that date of birth cannot be changed yeah. under any circumstances mm -hmm. once it is in our database. Mm -hmm. So many other things are involved. Yeah. Then you end up at the voting time. You say you are now going to check the voting process mm -hmm. with paper <laughs> and you have no machines you know simple simple machines for verification yeah there are machines like that mm -hmm. at the voting center yeah you can use the card to swipe it and it will tell you some information when you are not satisfied you get to the national identification center and it will give you the information yeah now stop for a moment when the case were, was brought to the court about problems with the last elections we were at the brink of disaster in this country yeah. how could you start biometric identification and then start using pink sheets to verify so we have a situation where we have all these confusions taking place now recently i hear of uh, a ci that had come to parliament and to make the ghana, to card, ghana card and so on and so forth document nia claims that they have registered people but most people registered don't have the cards yeah and the supplier of the cards say government has not paid them Mm -hmm. So they can't release the cards to you. Yeah. So how can you use the card as a precondition for Ghanaians to register and vote? Yeah. And yet the constitution says that every Ghanaian has the right has the right to register and vote. Yeah. That is the reason why I feel very proud myself that before we started the national identification system, yeah. the first fundamental question we asked was who is a Ghanaian? Mm -hmm. Who is a Ghanaian? Yeah. The law says one thing, the geography says something, mm -hmm. the sociologists say something, yeah. and so on and so forth. Yeah. We need clarity. 
person who a Ghanaian is. Who is a Ghanaian? Thank God, I have a book of reading coming out pretty soon. Okay. With very veritable, very respected, noble Ghanaians mm -hmm. who have written papers. Okay. In order to help to clarify these things. Okay. So when it comes out, I hope there will be some debate. Mm. So that people can begin to stop and think. Okay. Am I a Ghanaian? Okay. My dear, am I a Ghanaian? <laughs> I come from Aplau. Yes. <laughs> Western Togo land. <laughs> Western Togo land. Am I a Ghanaian? We, we are all proud of your achievements and uh, we appreciate your good work for Mother Ghana. I'm sure Marina Koshi and the late Komla were very proud of you. The Komla Dumo Foundation. Yes. What has it been up to? Well, uh, I had been dreaming about establishing a Koma Dumo Pan African Institute for Broadcast Journalism. Interesting. That has been my aspiration. I hope it will happen before I exit from here. Definitely. Yes. Uh, cardiac health is on the table now. Wow. And we are hoping that people will, you know, rally around mm. and we can, young professionals, especially those of you in the media, yeah. you're working under intense, Pressure. very intense stress. Mm -hmm. You don't eat well. Yep. And even when you exercise, you go and drink plenty of beer. <laughs> like i do because of stress because of stress <laughs> and things like that we're trying you know people working in the banking sector mm. they're working under a lot of stress yeah. lawyers are working under a lot of stress yes. you know so many categories of people mm. and we don't have a centralized organization that is moving the process up front so we've developed a project we've just finished with uh, the costs the costing of the project yeah and we are talking mm -hmm. to see but covid has been you know the 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 horse we are all beating <laughs> so it delayed everything yes it delayed everything mm -hmm. but my hope is that in due course those things will be up front mm -hmm. and we'll begin to come back into you know uh, we, we will all support yeah, so you the, the real thing is the media people, yeah. the death rate mm -hmm. of people suffering from cardiac arrest yeah. or other cardiovascular incidents are in the media. Yeah. And they don't seem to pay attention to so those right. things. Mm. So we want to send a message to the media. Yeah. They should join us to try and do something. Yeah. Not because of Komla, yeah. but because of they themselves yeah. and the future generation. The future. We can't allow the next generation mm -hmm. to just simply waste away like yeah. that. Yeah. All right? True. We need to do something. But I'm personally passionate about that. That's true. And so I've tried as much as possible to do the project document the costing has been done. We are beginning to talk to a few people to see whether, you know, we'll get positive responses and so on and so forth. Mm. And then when that is done, we can begin to look outside. Yeah. I mean, you look at Canada, mm -hmm. you know, you should just simply look at what they do on the day of their heart celebration and mm. things like that. Mm. And, you know, I, I don't know what to say about this. Yeah. You know, I have hypertension. Mm. It is running in my family. Yeah. So, you, you, you know, I get worried if yeah. other people have it the same problem. It runs in many families, yes. I must say. So if there is nothing else I can do mm -hmm. in my old age, yeah. I just want to be a part of saving the that next generation. Oh, God That's bless you I, for I, I that say. thought. 
and for just thinking about that yeah. definitely god will make it happen and we'll all support you i'll come there i must say talk. you are a very strong man losing a wife losing a son how do you manage grief <laughs> uh, that's a good question let me summarize one our family had developed you know a passion for certain types of music okay and you know music can be very uplifting mm -hmm. and the songs are also forms of prayer yeah so together i've become much more prayerful Mm. than I've ever been. Wow. And for that reason, I've also learned to write down my prayers. Mm. So, my prayer journals, each booklet has about 15 pray 50 prayers in okay. each of them. Mm -hmm. So, I pray whether in the night, I sleep, or what have you, I wake up and I transcribe okay and it is there mm. so from time to time i go through yeah. and i read mm. the third is to preach to myself yeah to preach to myself mm. i depend on the scriptures mm -hmm. and then i interpret the scriptures i read the literature by notable saints and the pillars of my faith yeah. saint augustine's saint benedict so on and so forth yeah. to give me a sense of direction mm. to be sure of my faith yeah all right mm -hmm. then this is something which my uh, the gentleman who was in charge of the funeral home mm you know hated and i think my family also didn't like the idea but it's an old ancient practice okay that when you lose loved ones yeah there is a point of separation yeah and that point of separation is when you have an opportunity to have if you like the body mm -hmm. right in front of you okay you stand alone and you are watching okay that you know this is someone i love yeah and this is my last moment with the person with the person mm. you pray you communicate in spirit as you okay. you you're there mm. and when you come back you feel a certain inner peace Relief. Yeah. All right. Mm -hmm. So I did that with my wife, with my older sister, mm. with my younger sister, mm. and with Komla. Okay. I'll drive from here to the funeral home in uh, Lashibi. Okay. And ask them to pull the body out. Wow. And then I sit there and I look, and I'm praying. Wow. Sometimes the tears will come, mm -hmm. and what if you? Yeah. But you, you get to the point of recognizing yeah. the separation yeah all right mm -hmm. there are others yeah the sense of humor yeah you remember the family in our times of humor mm -hmm. and the laughter mm -hmm. my daughter is notorious <laughs> when it comes to <laughs> laughter she will laugh to a point where we will all say She's finished laughing, so we have no laugh left for us, you know. Okay. So you remember all those things. You recall yes. going down memory lane mm -hmm. and so on and so forth. Yeah. And we also used to watch some funny stand-up stand -up comedians. Mm. You know, we lived in the United States and, you yeah. know, African-Americans, when it comes to humor, <laughs> they are incredible. Yeah. So I go and turn on you know i either go to uh is it youtube or mm -hmm. uh, you youtube know, and pull them out i sit there even in my grief yeah i'm laughing my head off yeah you see the sense of recovery mm -hmm. is so important yeah 
and then of course eating diet okay what i eat okay uh, occasionally i love to drink beer i enjoy my beer <laughs> that's nice yes. <laughs> and finally my books oh i delve myself into my books completely mm -hmm. the rest of the world can go to blazes <laughs> i'm acquiring new knowledge <laughs> and i'm enjoying what i'm doing and I, I i don't have to say everything that's very uh, that, that's important the, the, that's the way and and finally let me say it living in solitude yeah i enjoy solitude mm. i love the sea i like the forests okay so i drive out okay i spend days and days sitting you know sitting at the beach yeah and wondering what kind of god is this yeah who create this incredible hmm. you know water body yeah violent as it looks yeah and yet beneath it there is still peace yeah fishes are thriving out there that's true why what you, you, what kind of god is it? he must be marvelous yeah he must be incredible he's a god who is love and who is compassionate Definitely. I go into the forest and I walk around and my mind goes away. You know, interestingly enough, I also learned to take photographs. Yeah. Photography. Okay. And Do my that. interest is nature. Oh. So wow. I go into the forest, I'm taking pictures, mm. sitting out there, mm. you know, meditating about so many things. Yeah. After all, what is this life? Nature is therapeutic. It's very therapeutic. And I must say, you don't even look 80. You are so blessed. Let me wish you <laughs> a happy birthday. Well, As thank you, you very 80. much. I appreciate that. We, we, we are really appreciative of your contribution to the development of Mother Ghana. And I must it's a say, call to duty. God richly bless you. <laughs> I'm so grateful that you spoke with us. Thank you so much, uh, viewers, for watching. Remember, he loves to cook. I'm going to taste his meal because he actually did some chicken and something for me. I'm going to taste it and give you my verdict. He will also <laughs> be walking me through his study where he usually sits to read. We'll be going there. All of that. Um, enjoy the rest of our programs. So here we are at Prof's study where he usually buries himself. He told you that he buries himself in his books. We're here. He'll be telling us more about all the things we find here. Prof. Can we start with this picture? Definitely. Uh, many of uh, the pictures that you see, um, you know, uh, showing Komla, were gifts after he had passed away. Mm. And so I always like to keep him around. Yeah. Uh, there is a story about the relationship I've had with Komla mm. over the years. Okay. Um, essentially because uh, I lost many of my siblings and by the time i was already in the university i had no real brother oh, my nice. brother who was or currently in the uk was about nine years old Oops. yes we had about 17 years age difference wow so he came and grew up in my house mm -hmm. whilst Kamala was there so they became my brothers okay. my mother beautiful she, she, woman. She, she loves white things Oh. Because of the Catholic tradition, I see. always dressed in white. You know. <laughs> Who nearly became a sister? Uh, a sister, <laughs> and this is my father out here. Okay. Now I became a Eucharistic minister of the Catholic Church, uh -huh. and there I was administering the Holy Communion. Communion. Wonderful father-in-law Philip Baho. Okay. You know. It's a household uh, name. Yes, there's a household <laughs> name. Okay. After many years out of Bishop Herman College, mm. I became an active member of the Old Boys Union. Okay. And very active in the affairs of the school. Mm. And out of recognition, 
right. the school board and management okay. decided to give me a special award mm. which signals that I've become the face of oh. Bishop Herman College. Mm -hmm. Komla is a good pianist. Like his uh, grandfather. Grand grandfather. <laughs> and so we've captured that one as well. That must be your wife. Is that? Yes, this is my lovely wife. She's so beautiful. You know, uh, Philip Beho's daughter, first oh. daughter. Cecilia, right? Yes, Cecilia. I always like to sit at home and to look at the children. Okay. And my thoughts will be running about so many things about them mm -hmm. and what I think, you know, I'm hoping they will become. Okay. So I wrote this when we were in Puyallup, Washington State, mm. 1980. Okay. Do you mind if I read this to Please you? Please go ahead. Every family has a hero. Okay. Every man, woman, child has a hero. Okay. But who am I to be one of for anyone? Okay. I work, think, and even believe I am a hero. But who am I to be one? She asked why my eyes are red. The earth must be turning for this internal agony to show. She fills my head and it is hot. Are you all right? No. How can I when I'm not anyone's hero? Okay. I wrote this in 1980. Okay. And I'm... Wrote it to Komla? Yes. I'm fascinated because Mrs. Mandela Mm -hmm. When Kamala went to cover the Mandela funeral, mm -hmm. it was almost as if I had put the words in the mouth mm -hmm. of that woman. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. You've Ms. done a really good job. I, I, I wouldn't have liked to be on the As media. a father, as a, a development specialist, as a statesman, you Thank paid you. your dues. I've paid my dues, and that's what I agree. We appreciate your contribution Thank to you. the development of Mother Ghana. God bless you. Thank and you. as you God turn you 80, too. may He continue to strengthen you for the rest of the days you have on earth. I am going to make uh, sweet and sour chicken stew and let me begin by saying that uh, I'll use a little dash of salt just to give it a little bit of taste. Thereafter I will use an all-purpose spices And as I do this, I have to make sure that the spices get well into the chicken so it don't enhance the, the taste. I also have here a bit of soya pepper just to give it a little of the Ghanaian flavor. We love to eat kebab and things like that. So I'm used to using local pepper to make it also feel the way Ghanaians like things. Now the next thing I have to do is to get the sweet and sour sauce which goes on to the chicken and again I try as much as possible to get the sauce properly
done in order to get the kind of flavor that the sweet and sour sauce gives to chicken when you're dealing with this kind of dish. And it must be clear that this dish is not for many textbooks. It is something that I just enjoy creating. So uh, that's what must be done to make it very, very personal. Thereafter, I add the onions. Already chopped. And then, of course, a bit of the chopped tomatoes as well. And this will be mixed very well just to be sure that the seasoning is done correctly and those who have the opportunity to enjoy this meal will realize that uh, cooking is a creative exercise. And then I enjoy cooking. I began cooking as a child of 11 and I continued right through to my own family life. Now after this, I'm now going to put the chicken into a pan and make sure that I steam the seasoning and everything into the chicken and have it get into the marrow of the bones of the chicken. So here we go. I'm now ready just to steam the chicken for about five minutes at most. Just to soften it and allow the spices to give it the flavor that those who enjoy eating my food will never regret. So here we are. The fry is on. And so I empty the chicken. So whilst I'm steaming the chicken, I'll still a little bit of time to cut again the tomatoes, onions, a little bit of pepper, and I like to cook with olive oil. Even though it's expensive, for health reasons, I prefer to use olive oil. And in the process, I also take the chicken out after it has been steamed and have it fried for a little while in order to get everything into the chicken and make the meat compact not flabby and as I'm doing this it is the chicken fat that is cooking the chicken itself so nothing added no water nothing and it continues for some time and I said five minutes and then we'll be done Skomas Legacy Oh wow. This is supposed to be his dining table. Oh. Yes. I'll become a professor one day and I'll become a boss player. <laughs> I'm sitting on Komar Dumont's dining table and I'm going to be served by his father, Professor Ennis Dumont. Am I not privileged? This one. That's too big. <laughs> Mm. So that's okay. Oh, don't tell me that's enough. <laughs> <laughs> 
the f I can't wait to taste it. I was it. thinking of the things that must go. The aroma is okay. Okay, guys. This is a meal prepared by Professor Dumo himself. So, I am privileged right here eating on your behalf. <laughs> <laughs> Wow. <laughs> I just could tell from the aroma that is going to be nice. And I'm really feeling the the seasoning. I mean the the chicken mm -hmm. is well seasoned. Yes. Oh. I haven't put in that much salt. Okay. And pepper. Okay. Because I was being selfish. Why? I'm told not to eat too much. Of salt and of pepper. Salt and pepper. But this tastes awesome. Maybe because I also don't like pepper. So this is actually perfect for me. Prof, you are such a blessing. So do you do this for... I used to do this for Mawina, Koshi, and Komla. Oh, well, they used to enjoy the meal, but now they say I should stop cooking. Why? <laughs> they just don't want me in the kitchen anymore. <laughs> but you do it sometimes. Because well, Koshi is better than I am. He's also a good cook. Very good cook. Wow. <laughs> Thank you so much for talking to us, Prof. And God bless you. God bless you too. Yes, thank you so much for watching. Same time next week, I'll be coming your way with another exciting personality on PM Personality Profile. My name is Aisha Ibrahim. Do enjoy the rest of our program.